Hi there. Welcome to the office chat of April 2017. Well, also this month, if we look into the world or what happened in the world of terrorism and counterterrorism, we unfortunately um, discuss a number of attacks. And also this month, there have been several ones that um, uh, deserve our attention. And I, this time, I would like to uh, focus specifically on um, the, the dynamics of an attack or what happens after that or what perpetrators hope will happen. So first there was the attack um, uh, in St. Petersburg, an attack on the metro killing 14 people and the perpetrator was somebody from Central Asia. Uh, nearby, Stockholm, uh, also an attack, somebody took a truck, uh, drove it into a crowd and, and crashed into a building and also the perpetrator was somebody from Central Asia. And what you see very often if you have these incidents in a, in a short time span with same perpetrators, um, the media and also politicians uh, suddenly have the feeling there's something new or something special. Uh, in this case, people were pointing at Central Asia. Is that a new hot spot of terrorism? Uh, what's happening out there? And it shows very often that we um, uh, normally don't pay uh, much attention to what's happen happening in other parts of the world, and we meaning people from mainly Western media. But Central Asia, there's nothing new. A lot of terrorism uh, and, and terrorist groups, mainly in other parts of the world, because of the repressive regimes that in a way successfully manage to get these and drive these people out of these countries, they organize themselves in other parts of the world, mainly Afghanistan, occasionally terrorist attacks in the region, um, and uh, in, in, in to some extent it's a breeding ground from terrorism because the authoritarian regimes, they're, they're, the repression uh, out there makes it easier for some of these terrorist groups to recruit people. So Central Asia has been a hotspot of terrorism for a, a much longer period than, um, uh, than just the last couple of years. So these attacks are, are just uh, typical examples uh, that we've seen also in other parts of the world, mainly Central Asia itself. Then a very strange attack in, in Germany, an attack on the football club, the bus of the football club um, Borussia Dortmund, a um, uh, bomb attack, one of the players injured, no massive damage. Uh, and a lot of people thought, hey, another IS attack. Uh, you see that happening very often in media, immediately uh, labeling something as an IS attack. But there were serious doubts, and I think the German authorities handled it very carefully by not suggesting, not coming up with any concrete answer, but saying, hey guys, you know, wait, uh, we have to find out what's really happening. So what happened? There was a person who hoped that he could get, m gain money by this attack by, by buying put options. So hoping the share of Borussia Dortmund would go down. So this is a, a very commercial club, so they have shares. Uh, and he hoped by this attack that the football club would, would lose and that would have be, have be, um, get a lot of negative publicity. The shares would go down and he would gain. Well, he didn't gain, he will go to jail. There's a lot of evidence against him. Uh, but it's an interesting case showing that also non-terrorists do, do understand the dynamics of, of terrorism. Uh, realize that uh, if we make it look like jihadists uh, committed this attack, that it will have an enormous impact and that you can benefit from it. Well, in this case, I think, again, the German authorities did a good job in, in staying calm and, 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 and very... Uh, nuanced approach to this um, finding out the facts and only then coming up with all kinds of statements and they got the perpetrator very quickly. Um, also a, a rather small attack uh, or not so lethal attack unfortunately still two people got killed uh, the perpetrator but um, the police a police officer as well uh, a shooting on one of the main streets in in Paris the Champs-Élysées um, and the interesting uh, aspect of that case is that this shooting took place uh, just before the first round of the presidential elections in France. And it took place on a night where there was a debate between all the candidates on television. Uh, many hours of debate, uh, halfway or just over halfway uh, there's this, this attack and it influences this debate. It becomes an issue of the debate and some say some politicians profited from that. I'm not sure if it influenced the uh, results of the first round, but it shows that one person with a terrorist attack can have enormous impact on politics uh, by way of the media. So um, 
uh, again, this, this dynamics is very clear of terrorism. Uh, that happens, happened in France. Um, unfortunately, two people killed, but we see a lot more lethal attacks, of course, in the Middle East. Also, this month, April, we saw a very lethal attack in Afghanistan. Or unfortunately, there are lots of attacks, but this was one of the most deadly uh, attacks since 9-11. 160 people killed, a, ta a Taliban attack on a camp of the Afghan National Army, killing mostly unarmed military, 160 people killed. What was the impact there? Well, it had political consequences for the Minister of Defense and the, um, uh, the head of the Afghan National Army. So huge political implications uh, by this very deadly attack. Well, for more on the impact of terrorism, I'd like to finally um, uh, point out at a, um, a blog, at the Leiden Safety and Security blog, a blog by entry by Janine Roy van Zuiderwijn, who helps me a lot with uh, these, uh, uh, these videos, these office chats, and with the MOOC, uh, the Coursera course in general. And she wrote an article on uh, how uh, to counter terror and not only terrorism. So how can we, how can we deal with that dynamics, uh, the impact of terrorism, how can we diminish that, based on an excellent uh, new article by Brian Jenkins, one of the founding fathers of, of terrorism studies, who already in the 1970s said very interesting things about the dynamics of terrorism. But he came up with a, a new article, and uh, if you want to see the reaction by Janine de Roy van Zuiderwijn, and also with uh, um, referring to this article, have a look at the Leiden Safety and Security blog. That's it for this month. Hope to see you next month.